Hello viewers, this is Charles. We are working into QuickBooks 2016. We are in model 2 now and we are on the second video. I want to show you how to use the quick, sort of the easy step interview to go ahead and set up your company file. This is part one, there is part two, so make sure you watch both parts so that you know exactly how to set up everything the correct way. Let's head over to QuickBooks and start setting up your company file. We said from the very start that when you open QuickBooks, it starts from here and you click, click, we will click create a new company when you click that it takes you to where to what we call we termed as the easy step interview and this is where it starts so that's what we call the easy step interview we when you launch quickbooks 2016 for the first time it starts from this point for the first time it starts from this point and it displays this no company open dialogue no company open dialogue it's a dialogue box with three options one we have create a new company the second one we have open or restore an existing file and finally we have open a sample file that sample file is always there just for you to go through and check out to see what those guys did and you can actually see that you've done the right thing or you've not done the right thing we shall go into these two later in the course so let's click the first the first item which is create create a new company file when you do that we've said that takes us to a second screen that says let's say let, let's set your company so let's set your business and this is the heading that is on this slide and there on that side we have two options those are the two options you are seeing the first option we have the first option here which says answer some basic questions and we will do the rest you can always make changes later and here it has a blue icon that says start setup hope you can be able to see that the second option we have this this one which is the other options it has a drop down it has this drop down icon if you click on this drop down icon it has some other options that it displays you can see that there is open an existing file as our first option from that other option drop down list the second one we have convert quicken data the third one we have convert other accounting software data the fourth one we have set up on behalf of someone else and the last one we have advanced setup those are the options that we have there that are coming from that other options drop down list and from these five items i suggest you select the advanced setup which is the last option in other words when you click the other options drop down list make sure you pick advanced setup don't click anywhere so we've said we don't use this if you use this it will set up your company in just like three minutes and you will be done but you will never be done because the, there will be some more information that is missing it's better we take this other option and we click the drop, drop down list we check the advanced setup and when you click on the advanced setup like that it's it brings what we call the easy step interview that is the screen that comes up easy step interview that's what we've been talking about so we've said and i'm repeating that from the drop down list make sure you select advanced setup since it is the one that take that takes us to the easy step interview however newer versions as we shall see them newer versions of quickbooks when i'm talking about the newer versions at least they are meaning from 2020 onward 2020 at least onward those newer versions are asking in the other option we've seen where the that drop down you may see they are going to be asking you who are you creating the company file for that's the question that might come if you're using QuickBooks 2019, it may be a different question, but most of those, especially 2021, 
it gives you that that question who are you creating the company file for are you creating it for yourself or for someone else in this version we've seen creating it for someone else but in the other versions it means they have they added those those two questions for yourself which is not appearing in this version of 2016 so the difference is very small it is in terms of those things that they add on and those are the things we shall see but the rest is just giving you the general knowledge and from there if we are to use that we shall see what we what we start with when you go to that new versions because we agreed it's better for us to start from the older versions and we keep progressing over to the newer versions so just subscribe and follow on all our social media handles for more information on when we are going to be starting because if you keep following what we are doing you will be able to know when we are starting the newer versions other than the one we are on the version of 2016. Remember, as I said, there were two options. You can actually select the start. We can, if we go back, if you are to go back a little bit here, maybe you can close it up from here. Never wanted to close it, but we can go back maybe from here. I said, if you can choose this or you choose from here, but the best is to choose from here. But there are two options. You can, someone can choose from here if you know what you're doing. But for us to improve our understanding, it's better we use this. Because if you use the this start setup over here, this one, it will ask you a couple of questions and then create the company file based on how you answered those questions. You are going to end up changing quite a lot of what it has set up automatically. There, there will be a lot left out to set up it's suggested that you take a little bit more time and go through the advanced setup and that way it's it's set up it sets up the the way you want from the very beginning in other words you get the things set up correctly from the very beginning so with that in mind let's go ahead and click the advanced setup i'm going slowly because i want i want you to pick every step because if you go through this is a step interview the rest of the things are very easy just dropping things there there is nothing much that we are going to to be doing it is just the things will be very easy if you set it correctly from the start so we, we've clicked the the advanced setup and now we can see that we are in the easy step interview it's going to ask us some questions about our company and the first thing it it wants to know is what is the name of your company i'm just going to call it maybe we can just use this very name we can use my 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 company we can say kc accountants education accountants education center if that one is too big we can maybe just put but i've been using my company we can just put that let's maintain that though i just i will change it's it's basically in 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 education but i may have to put in i may put in some other things that may not be necessarily related to accountancy or or what because i just want to pick everything from the start that we can be able to to let me just change this let me put a general name so that i don't specify the industry let me just put casey group at least that one it, it gives you a general a general knowledge it can be anything but the other one is more specific so i've called it case group and then if we hit the tab key there are two options you can press enter but if you press enter it will take you to a next item of which we don't want to go there what i suggest is you can use them you can you can use the tab key when you press the tab key it will it will bring that same name the company name as the legal name but you've seen when I when I pressed enter, it took us to, it, it's as if I, I had pressed next. So that we are supposed to press tab key. When you press the tab key, it, it picks the company name and makes it the legal name. Remember this one, if you look at, if you look very closely, this company name has a, a register. It means we are supposed to fill this field. These other ones, they don't have a register. So it means even we can just skip these ones when we have not filled them and we add just them 
later. But I wanted you to note that when you press the tab key, it pops down the, 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 the company name to be similar to that of the legal name. That's what I wanted you to note. The next thing, it wants the tax ID. This is the tax ID here. That's the taxi ID. Now, as we've seen, this one, they don't have a register. It means they are optional. You can fill them or you can leave them out. The only time you would want to actually have, like if you put here the tax ID, it means you are going to be using the 1099 form. And that 1099 in QuickBooks, it is mainly focusing on it is mainly focusing on tax in other words the tax forms so what are we going to do here here we can decide to skip that but what you have to understand is that you can only put that if at all you are going to use what we call 1099 and 1099 form is what we call it's basically a form that is used to to report non employment income in other words, income tax for your relevant revenue collector. But for Ugandan case, it is Uganda Revenue Authority. In other words, that internal revenue service, it is helping the company to charge other companies or other contractors to charge them the income tax during the period or during the year then the other the the other time that you are going to need that is when is when you are going to use quickbooks payroll in other words when you are going to when you have already paid for quickbooks payroll services remember quickbooks payroll services they are not for free you pay for them you can be right now i'm using quickbooks but i'm not using quickbooks payroll services some other companies may be preferring to use an external tax practitioner to help them with their tax or to help them with their payroll. They may be hiring other companies to operate the payroll for them. So if it is like that, then you don't need to be using the QuickBooks payroll services. Therefore, you, you may not be needed to use the tax ID. The tax ID in Uganda, those are the ones we call the T numbers, tax identification numbers. If we had it, we would have put it there. If at all we are going to use those ones. But for now, we can just skip that. Because we are going to skip that because we are not going to use or we are not going to do either of those two things. We are not going to use QuickBooks payroll services and we are not also going to use 1099 forms. The reason as why I'm, I'm skipping this is that I want to give you something that is very basic so that everyone, even the person who doesn't have an accounting background can actually pick it. So with the advanced, when you go to the advanced tutorials, we shall look at this, we shall put in this and we see how we can operate. But I want to give everyone at least an understanding because the other tax aspect, it is also giving even headache to some accountant. So let's basically skip that for a reason we can leave we, we, we can leave that blank you can place the tab key on your keyboard and we go to the next thing it asks is what we call the street address it is asking for the street address that one you can put it they are asking the street address the city the state the phone phone numbers and the rest of the information as you can see it and this information is about your company itself in other words you don't put it here personal phone numbers personal addresses you put the addresses for the for the company so if you are not actually going to send out correspondences correspondences they may be in terms of letters sending demand notes to customers if you're not going to send any emails or letters you don't need to put in this information because the reason as why we are putting that information is that if I send an email, because in QuickBooks, you can be able to send an email. If I send an email to a company, they will need to see all these things. They need to see the location of the company, the phone number, so that they can contact you. If you are not going to send demand notes, then you don't need some of these things. So the question is, are we going to be sending out correspondences? And if you are not going to be doing so, it means we don't need to set, up, to set this up. But if you are going to to do those correspondences, then you want to have 
this information populated there. Let me assume that we are going to do that. Let me just put for the street I can skip. I just put the city, Kampala. I change the country to others. The phone number we can just put, we can just put last two five six three one seven three one seven. Can put zero zero zero. Even the four fax number we can we can also put it plus two five six. That's the country code for Uganda three one seven. Can just put three one three three one three one zero zero. You can also put the email address. We can put KC group email address KC group at let me just say at gmail dot com. Just something small dot com. Then. The website www.kcgroup.com and we click next. When you click next, it is the same thing like clicking OK or you just tap the, the OK button on your keyboard. And the next thing that will show up is what we call the select the industry. In other words, the industrial type, the type of the industry that you are in. So we can select any here. You can say it is depending because the other the reason why I changed I, I had put KC accountants. It means I was supposed to be either in accounting, accounting or bookkeeping, or but if it is KC group, it can be in any in any industry because it is a general thing. So I can just maintain maybe the accounting and bookkeeping, and I click next. So we can maybe go a little bit back slightly. We just go back slightly. We've seen that accounting or bookkeeping is the first one. It's just what I selected, but we could select any from, from those. You can see that there is a lot here. You are seeing there are very many things here that you can select. It can be an insurance agency. It can be a bank. It can be a legal service. It can be offering professional services. It can be an hospital. It can be anything, but you are seeing there are different industrial types that are here in this dialog box we've seen there is accounting or bookkeeping we've seen there is agriculture if you happen to be in construction if you happen to be in insurance you can see if you are if you let's say you are in a hotel industry there are very many if you're in manufacturing there are many there is just a the, it, there is a lot actually of the industrial types the industrial options that you can you can select and here there is no wrong answer you can select any and if you are not sure which one to pick we can just go at the very bottom here at the bottom if you reach at the bottom there are those two last items which i need to clarify you will see a general product based business it is general product business the other option is general service business so if you are not sure that maybe this company if let's say that if if someone says kc group you are not sure whether the company is in manufacturing whether the company is in wholesale you can't know so if it is in that format and it is the question is general then what we have to do here we can come and select a general aspect that it is a product based or the company is just offering services because you may not be sh sure of what the company is actually dealing in of course it is impossible but i'm just giving you a scenario just like the way i've given you case group we've not specified where it, which industry it does or what work what kind of things the company is involved in but the good thing that we've seen they are different options but now what i'm going to pick i had picked accounting and bookkeeping but for our learning purposes let me just pick the product based when i click the product based then i can click next here i've selected the product based it means we are going to be selling products we don't even know which products we are going to be selling but we shall put those later and when you click next this screen asks how is your company organized? That is the next screen that comes up. And when that question comes, don't get stuck up on this screen. The reason QuickBooks is asking you this is because sometimes people use other programs like the, the TurboTax. These are the terminologies that are within QuickBooks. TurboTax as an example to do their 
their taxes. There are other systems that our companies use. You may find that in Uganda, they are doing IFRIS as a software that is helping companies to be able to process and file their returns. They are not basically filing their return, but it is helping them in terms of the documentation, which is quickening the process of filing their returns. Because now you are seeing that in Uganda, we, we have IFRIS, we have other, uh, other options that we use to be able to account for what we have, what we are going to be claiming, either we are claiming VAT or whatever. Because that is very important. It is going, it, it, by knowing how your organization is organized or how your company is organized, it is going to help you even know the procedure for paying taxes. Like in Uganda, a partnership company, of course, most, most of the time these partnerships, they are just people come together and they start doing business together. You find that as per the laws, partnerships, they are not supposed to pay tax. A partnership company doesn't pay tax. Who pays tax and a partnership? It is the partner, the partners themselves. It's like the, indiv the individuals themselves, they are the ones who pay taxes and they use the individual tax schedules to assess their, themselves. So the only thing that the partnership does is to prepare and they get a share for every partner on the profits they have accumulated for the year. After that, they are taxed individually. So if, if you don't actually know how your business is organized, you will not even know which kind of system that I'm going to use to pay taxes. So that's why QuickBooks is asking for these things. You may find that other companies, they are using external people to handle their payroll services. So they don't, they may not need some of these other QuickBooks programs or packages. So that's the reason as why you may find that they are asking some of those questions. So don't get stuck on that. So in order to pull all the information onto the correct line of on the tax form or on the the turbo tax or the tax system that 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 organization is going to be using we need to know how the organization how the organization or how the company is organized either the company is going to be organized as a sole proprietor it's a sole proprietorship it is a partnership it is a limited company it is a corporation it is a non for profit it says if you are self-employed, then we should know how you are organized. And by knowing that, we know we, we will be knowing the type of taxes that the company is going to be liable to pay to the revenue authorities of that respective country. And we shall also know which rates to apply because you may find that if they are partners, they are going to be paying individual rates. They are not like corporations where they are going to sell. For Uganda, they charge 30% income tax for companies. So it will be that, but it will be the one that will help us to know how we are going to be doing this. And that's going to help us as far as taxation is concerned. For now, if you have an accountant who is doing your tax, then you, you need to choose other or none. Because now, most of these things you are seeing, they have form. This form is this form they are just respecting, they are just referring to taxes. But if you have your external tax practitioner who is helping you to file your taxes, then you don't you don't need to show here how you are organized because the emphasis here, what these guys are emphasizing, they want to see how we are going to be paying taxes. So what we do. We just click on others. If you are that company which is not going to be handling the tax matters by yourself, and you are going to, to give that to an external accountant to help you on that. Hope that one is clear. Because now, if you if you pick one of these choices, if let's say you are a sole proprietor, there is a form you are supposed to work on as in in in, in regards to the taxes. If you choose partnership, it's the same way. So what will happen is that you will be on different screen settings. You'll be having on the, because now if you click a non for profit, 
it will take you to a different screen, which is in relation to that non-profit non making organization as far as tax is concerned. So here we are basically going to look at the how the organization is going to be organized. Because now, as I said, if you are going to have an external person or an external accountant to, to handle your tax issues, then it means you don't need to select any of these. You will go to others, stroke or none. Because if you click anywhere, it will bring things that you will get stuck with because you will not be having any idea of how the whole things are going to be worked on. So click on others, stroke none, and go to next. Click next. The reason why I've done it, I've done it that way is because I want people to not to get confused with bringing tax issues, with accounting issues, and you become stuck with QuickBooks. I want to do it from the very start, but we shall do other numbers, practical numbers, where we shall be looking at some of those things, where we, we, when we are going to be looking at, maybe it is a limited company, we handle some of those things, but at least for the best items, let's assume that it is our company is not going to be handling taxes. We, we shall have an external person, an external accountant to handle our taxi matters. So I have selected that option just to help those people viewing with the idea that they are not, they are not going to be stressed about accounting and that they, at the same time they are, they are going to be stressed with tax because this is a beginner package and we need to first understand the basics before we go to some of those advanced ideas. So make sure you ask in the comment section you share also to others and you also subscribe so that you know what has been uploaded as far as what you have learned so that we can be able to have a cumulative knowledge at the end of this because we want all of us to be experts in this field of quickbooks so after clicking next this screen pops up and it asks it it asks me to select the first month of your of your fiscal year and we are seeing it is the, the default it's by default it is selecting january it is january by default so unless yours is different you don't need to change this but if it is different then you can change i'm not going to change this so i can click next there are those companies like for like let's say for uganda basically the financial year it is starting on 1st july to 30th june so if it is july then you you come here and select that first month but me i'm going to assume that my first year is going to be january 1st the, which which will end 30th 31st december so i'm not going to change this and i click next when i click next then it it wants to set it wants me to set the administrator password. In other words, it wants you to set a password for your for that company file you are opening. In if you look at this, it says optional in a red. But I encourage and I recommend that you you set a password, and there is a reason as to why we are doing so. We shall look at how we do those passwords and usernames as we proceed in within the course just make sure you follow along and be part of the of this so i'm going to there are two options you can skip then you put you you can edit it you can you i will show you how to how, how to add a password if at all you had not put it here but me i'm going to just put a password for that, I'm just going to select. Let me just put in my password. You put in the password that is very easy for you to remember. You write it somewhere. That's why I told you you have to have somewhere you are, you are writing. Let me just use this. Something that you can remember. After setting the password, then you can now click next. Here, these are only passwords. You put administrator password, then you retype. This one, the, the one which is here must be similar to this one. 
otherwise if it's not it will not take you to that next slide so those there must be similar and we've said here we typically choose there is something we want to explain on the passwords let me go back a little bit sorry let me go back a little bit here we are seeing we are seeing only passwords the question is there is no way you can put a password when you don't have a username meaning quickbooks what it does it sets your administrator username or administrator name as admin it is automatic unless you've changed it but if you don't change it it is there we shall see we shall see it because right, right now here you can't see it but when i'll take you where where you can edit it and you'll be able to see that it has actually been there so we click next but i wanted you to notice that it says create your company file and I've, uh, as i told you we shall talk more about the user users and passwords in the next video so when you reach here you see here there is nothing we are supposed to fill so you click next to create our company file so you can see when you click next it takes you to a save screen or it is a safe screen showing all the previous companies company names you worked on you can see this my company this is what i have been using all these are the ones i've been working on so it gives you all the ones you've been you you, you, you worked on previously and you will notice it pulls it put the name of my of kc group here under the file name for my file name you are seeing it is calling it kc group and in case you ever want to change it you can change it you can change it to something else but what i want you to understand to, to 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 pick here is that it here it shows you where it is saving these files so we can click save because that's what i wanted you to to, to witness that it is picking the name of the company to be the file name and at the same time it, it shows you where it is storing the it is storing the the, the 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 company file so we can go ahead and click save we've saved it the reason as why we've saved it is because we wanted it to to be somewhere just in case we, we want to go back and check we know that we know where it is stored that info so we can check and see that documents that we've saved so and now it is creating my company file you are seeing it is taking some time it is creating my company file now here just you are seeing that it has it is creating and it has created it right now it doesn't mean that everything is complete you are seeing that it has created the company file as kc group but we are not yet done we are not yet done so because now you can see if we just close off from here we will find ourselves that we have saved the company but we've created only something like 50 percent of what we should we should do so we have now to, to make sure that we complete our company to we've waited it went to 100 percent and it completed creating the company and now you can see even here up here you are seeing that we've been having quickbooks pro 2016 but here we are seeing kc group quickbooks pro 2016 it has created the, our company there so the company file is set up but it's not yet complete so let's go ahead and continue so we are now in the customization section now let's click next because here there is nothing we have to to do here we are now customizing so we click next so after clicking next and now it is it says what do you sell do you sell services only products or or both or products only in other words what it wants us to confirm are we dealing in products or we are dealing in services or we are dealing in both if you are not sure then you can go both products and services because a company can can at some time sell products and at the same time give services 
I may be selling some textbooks, but I'm also giving accounting tutorials. So that's one of an example. The product, the books will be the product and the, the service will be the tutorials that I'm providing. So, or I'm, I'm providing professional, they may be advice in terms of, of tax, what, what, those things. And at the same time, you may be, you may be best in products alone, but in the future, you are sure you, 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 maybe you, you you are you are you are likely to go or to onboard the product so it doesn't hurt to choose both products and services it is really prudent to assume that to assume that way so as we can have all the different options for our viewers to see because i need to make sure that at least you, you don't basically look at a service sector, you look at both. Because now after understanding the both, doing a product or a service, it will be very easy. So we can click next. When we click next, we can see that it asks, do you charge sales tax? I'm going to, to, to either say yes or no. Here, they are also giving you recommended for your business. We can say we are charging sales tax, of course, or we may not be charging. But I'm just going to leave it at yes, and then I click next. When I click next, this screen asked me if I, I want to create estimates in QuickBooks. Think of an estimate as a quote or a bid or a proposal for a job or work. If I would like to have my house remodeled, I'm going to create an estimate for that. In other words, if you want to renovate your house, you need to create a budget for the renovation. You need to create a quotation for the person who is going to help you renovate the house. Meaning you have to set budgets, you have to set amount aside. If you expect maybe you will receive, you will win a bid, or you, you expect you will bid in any activity or any activity. Because some companies, they bid like the the accounting firms they bid for for work or for job you bid if you win you take the job so if you expect you are going to do any of those three then it means you have to say yes to using to using that so we can say yes we are going to use the state statements so the, the other the other thing is it is going to be looking at so about this it has clicked itself this was statement, the other one was, this was the one for estimates. You click next, we are going to use it. Then the other one comes in and says, using statements in QuickBooks. Are we going to be using statements in QuickBooks? Typically statements go out to customers at the end of every month. And it is just a summary of everything that happened that month. If, if, if maybe we have sold we have sold to customer a we can create a report for that customer we see whether that customer has been profitable or the customer has not been profitable it may be when the customers they are the one who is requesting for their trans transaction ledgers so if you don't use statements in your business you can always say no but for us we need to use statements in quickbooks so we have to say yes so it is already in a yes, we click next. The second thing that comes is using progress invoicing. That screen that asks about progress invoicing. Now, this goes with the estimate question that it asked us. If you have an estimate, you have the ability to actually invoice the customer based on that estimate. If you have progress invoice invoicing turned on, you can invoice your customer for a portion of that estimate or certain items that were on that estimate. I always suggest if you do estimate, then you would also want to have that progress invoicing too and it's supposed to be turned on. So we also here say yes and we click next. When you click next, this screen for managing bills, bills you owe comes up. I know a lot of people don't put their bills in QuickBooks. They just pile them up on their desk. And when it is time to pay the bills, they will just go through the, the stock and they write the check. But your QuickBooks will be accurate if you do put those invoices there in QuickBooks. However, to make full use of the program, 
you probably want to go ahead and put all your bills in QuickBooks. Because if you don't put those bills in QuickBooks, it means you are not utilizing QuickBooks at its full capacity. So we put, we, we, we say, we put, we put all our bills in QuickBooks and we use the system to, to, to make sure that we have we have efficiency, We're like we are moving well. Because if you do that, you can be able to run any report at any time to see who is owing. And you can also know if maybe the person you, 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 you've taken, maybe you've taken it in 30 days, 90 days, and all that. Because that will help us get a, 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 a complete picture of what your books looks like. Thus, we have to turn on that screen for managing bills you owe we click yes and we continue we click next the screen pops up for tracking inventory in quickbooks true inventory means tracking inventory in quickbooks means that you you sell physical physical products and you want quickbooks to tell you when you have let's say maybe you have you, you want to you want quickbooks to tell you what you have what you have left with so that you can know when to order for more stock and that's true and that's tracking inventory because if you can know what is left you can actually be able to order so that you you don't lose money because if customers come in and you don't have stock then it means you are losing money so you order you allow quickbooks to track your inventory if at all you are in physical products so we can say we track inventory so we click yes and we click next the the second thing that comes that comes up is tracking time in quickbooks that is the screen that comes quickbooks will also track the time that you are uh, you or your employees or your subcontractors spend working on a different job or activity the time you spend on on a given activity can be tracked in QuickBooks. If you are doing job costing, then you do you do want to track job costing is just when you are if it's it, it, it's it's a costing terminology where you actually focus on one activity when it's done you pick another one. It's you you get materials for that particular item if it is completed. If let's say you are you are a carpenter and someone orders a chair you finish that lot or that bunch for that customer then you pick another batch for the other customer in other words each customer pays the amount and it's that amount that you are going to how you determine the amount it depends on the materials you are going to use so if you are doing so then you need to track time because you need to know the customer will come and says me i want that chair in, in two days so you need to track time so we can now come here and say we need to track time in quickbooks and then click next after clicking next this question is asked do you have employees now this can be very a very misleading question because if you notice it says we have 1099 contractors and that's under the yes option if you look at the the yes option here it says we have w2 employees here it says we have 1099 contractors but remember these 1099 contractors they have nothing to do with you with the payroll because they are not employees absolutely they have nothing to do with the, the payroll they are considered as vendors in quickbooks the 1099 contractors so since they are considered as vendors you will always want your contractors or vendors send you a bill and then you pay that bill it's not a payroll
So I'm going to just leave that at no. We can talk about that. We can talk about failure in a data module and we will we will see what will be there. But for now, let's click a no. The reason as why we are clicking a no is because in the beginning we said we don't use the 1099 forms. So if you click yes, and yet the other side you said you are not going to use them, you are not going to do tax, then it means you are just contradicting yourself. So here we come and say no. Then we click next. Hope that one is something that is giving you something to learn. Now we are getting, because there there is nothing to do, now we are getting down to the end of the easy step interview. I want to, to go ahead and stop the video right here. And let's go ahead and flip over to part two and we will, we will keep going with the easy step interview. So let's see you there.